Uh, Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus are much better than standard HDR10, but from my experience, very few games support it. Uh, why is the games industry lagging behind film slash television in this respect? Uh, this is an interesting question, right, John? Because mm. generally, not just Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus, we've we've got a bit of a HDR problem in the games business at the moment, right? Yeah, it's not just about Dolby Vision, which, by the way, is not actually a standard supported by all TVs anyway. Like, I think Samsung doesn't support Dolby Vision, so it's not something you can count on. So I can kind of see why it's maybe it hasn't taken off in a big way. But at the same time, the larger problem is just that HDR is either missing or poorly implemented in a lot of new games. And it feels like it's yeah. kind of gotten worse. I feel like there was a while where HDR was almost always expected in big new releases, but these days it almost feels like it's hit and miss where you really can't be sure if it's going to have HDR at all. And then if it does, is it going to be well implemented? And that sucks. Uh, mm -hmm. And I've actually mm -hmm. spoken with developers about this before. And there, so some of it just comes down to like implementing the stuff to make, to tune it, to make it look good. Uh, a lot of them don't have the experience or the hardware to do that. And you actually need proper like displays to, to test all this on. I think it's becoming more prolific. So you'd think it would improve, but I still feel like there's a little bit of a pushback to it uh, just in terms of tuning everything, making sure the artists are happy with the way it looks in HDR and a bunch of different things that seems to just lead to them saying just like, you know what, screw it. We're not doing HDR. Uh, so far too often, but man, when HDR sings, it's, it really, it really sings. And I feel like there's got to be a way to convince more people. I feel like a lot of, that's another thing. A lot of developers work on these games. They may be, they're working on PC monitors at the office, not HDR. Uh, and at home, they very likely may or may not actually have a decent HDR capable TV. So it's, right. you really mm -hmm. can't count on, especially heavy PC users. Cause PC HDR is kind of in the ghetto right now. Still, there's not that many. We're getting more and more OLED monitors now, but for a long time, HDR on the PC was just terrible. It was just these stupid LCDs with like 400 nit max. Like they called it HDR 400, which I think did a ton of damage to HDR actually, because people would buy these displays, think, oh, it's HDR, turn it on, it looks terrible, and then in their mind, HDR is bad. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a huge. That was a huge misfire. On or, the or were still irrelevant because irrelevant you know. yeah exactly so that that did so much damage i think distorts the public perception as well but i feel like if anybody's seen this stuff seen it working well uh you change your tune because it's transformative so please mm. anybody listening if you're working on a cool new game and it doesn't have hdr you know uh you can make your graphics better by implementing good hdr it will make it pop and I feel like most TVs sold today are going to be good with HDR. OLED's now popular. Everybody's making them. Uh, the chances of there being good OLED or HD, even on LCD space, even in LCD and the micro LED stuff coming out, uh, there's just more HDR stuff out there than ever. It's time. We need more games to consistently yeah. support this. And for those that have, I'd say thank you because there's still, there have been some great games out there that do awesome HDR support. Uh, I, I, the one I'm really excited to see is I, I hope it is HDR better, uh, is no risk for the wicked. The, the new one from uh, moon studios. Cause I still Bearing think in mind, Ori. I'd imagine because yeah. Ori, man, yeah. the second Ori game, I think has still like top three HDR implementation of all time. It's unbelievable sure. looking just like I used it in the steam deck OLED reviews yeah, precisely yeah, yeah. for that reason, it's, because it's, it just, it really said to me, this is like a handheld you know, LG OLED TV exactly. experience. Exactly. It, it really feels astonishing. That way. I was just completely blown away by it. And I think that's another thing which I would like to commend Valve on is the idea that we've now got this mainstream device that actually has state of the art HDR, which may help drive more adoption, hopefully. Yeah, especially on PC. That'd be mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on this one, Alex? Because uh, you've been looking at content this week. Uh, yeah, you've this. been in HDR. You, yes. I've been HDR all week, all day, every day. Uh, Given what I've seen of uh, the post-process stuff, I'm actually pretty happy with the way that looks in most games. Uh, so even if a game doesn't ship with a good one, I feel like you can get an okay enough experience on PC should this be a thing 
uh, that comes out in an official form. I'm talking about this RTX HDR stuff that a video should be out, hopefully by the time. I'm still just finishing the last little bits of it. Um, but yeah, I, in the PC space, I, I, I'm also disappointed in the lack of standardization beyond just straight HDR10. And uh, but I think that's just because once again, if you have multiple standards, like like I don't even know what you do at that point. Like it's hard enough to get developers to like make a good PC version sometimes in the first place. Like then also HDR on top. Well, it should be part and parcel of just general development, right? Because it should be happening on consoles. I know, but I don't. Yeah, I, I don't know. Sometimes my faith wavers. <laughs> I, don't, I don't trust Your a faith. lot of. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, what do you think specifically about the point being made about Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus? Is it just the fact that not every screen does it, so not everybody supports it? But there is Dolby mm. Vision support out there. There is. Um, does it require additional effort over you know, standard HDR? Or I mean, it requires a little extra effort, I suppose. But it's more Dolby Vision's weird because. Uh, it gives more control technically because you're no longer dealing with static metadata. Mm. Uh, but also Dolby vision modes, Dolby vision is designed to be something that you don't mess with. Right. Yeah. Uh, it outputs what it outputs and your TV accepts that and works. It limits what's possible, which now means that all of that stuff, all the luminance and the way everything works together is like in the control of the, the developer. So the thing about HDR 10 is that, there's a lot of adjustments the users can do to improve it or fix it and, and make it look how they want. And you lose all that with Dolby Vision, which can often lead to a presentation that maybe isn't so eye popping if it wasn't done well. Like good Dolby Vision is awesome, but when Dolby Vision is mediocre or bad, uh, there's really no way to fix it. You know what I mean? And that mm-hmm. that can be kind of annoying, I suppose. Okay. So it just uh, it just more demands more from the developer, basically. Okay, fair enough. Anything more to add to this? I don't think so. I'm quite looking forward to seeing your video, Alex. But just specifically, it's um, it was a feature released by NVIDIA that, which allowed for HDR to be uh, applied to SDR video content, right? And what this mod is doing right. is essentially saying... It's not just video, it can actually be applied to all content in a way that Microsoft already does with auto HDR, right? Yeah, uh, and and it's even more in-depth and it's higher quality. So it's interesting to see in practice. And I think based upon what the modders say, it's actually like a planned, the way it's laid out with the driver, it's actually like a planned feature for RTX GPUs. It's looking that way. Um, Just a matter of, I have no idea when they would announce this. it's not the first time things sneak into a driver beforehand and are technically possible to use before they're official. Uh, the NVIDIA driver is interesting in the fact that you can actually take advantage of it. Like it's hidden features due to the like NVIDIA's profile inspector, which is like a different tool altogether. Um, it's not put out by NVIDIA. So yeah, there's a lot of really cool stuff with the NVIDIA driver that sometimes like when I look at stuff like this, features like this, I think like, man, Intel's got a lot of catching up to do. Or AMD, I love their driver. F- well, I like how fast it is. I don't want to say I love their front end, but I love how fast it is. Yep. Uh, and but I still think like they don't have like things like RTX mm. HDR video or the the super samplings options or SGS OSAA or whatever. So there's a lot of things where I like think like, oh man, this is just another notch in the Nvidia belt. The of Nvidia its belt dominance. They yeah. should sell one of yeah. those actually, like an actual Nvidia belt. Belt, yeah, well, with a jacket too. Yeah. It's the belt of <laughs> dominance, the Nvidia belt of dominance. It can have that like eye AI logo, powered just like as belt buckle. The uh, you know the Nvidia <laughs> eye logo. I would love that. It's. Uh, I was just looking actually. Yeah, going back to uh, the RZ stuff, uh, John. Yeah. Uh, link on the CDI. Link the faces of evil and Zelda, the wand of Gamelon. <laughs> Yes, yes. Gamelon's a great the name. The Wand of Gamelon. The Belt of Dominance. <laughs> Good band, by the way. <laughs>